Let's face it, the rules of golf can be absolutely brutal, costing you stroke after stroke. My least favorite rule is the out of bounds rule. I think it's ridiculous, it needs to be changed. But there are some rules in golf that are actually good, that can save you strokes. So in this video today, we're gonna to talk about those rules, how you can use them to your advantage, shoot lower scores. Let's get right into it. Oh my goodness, you gotta be kidding me. <laughs> All right, first rule we're gonna talk about here. If this happens to you, there's a couple different options that you have. So I just topped my ball, it went six inches backwards, which is kind of impressive if I'm, if I'm gonna be honest and toot my own little horn here, but um, because my ball, after I struck it, came to rest inside of my original teeing area, I have the option of teeing my ball back up, okay? Teeing it back up on the tee, and hitting a shot. Now I can tee it back up from anywhere inside the teeing area without a penalty. So it's not gonna cost me an extra stroke. So yes, I would be hitting my second shot here, but at least I get to tee it up on a tee to make it a little bit easier on myself to hit it. Now this also goes for if I did hit it up, maybe it hit the tree up there, came back to my feet. As long as it ended up inside the teeing area, which we all know is two club links from the, from the teeing marker back, two club links that way and that box that makes the teeing area here. If it comes to rest inside that, I get to re-tee it here with no extra penalty stroke. Hitting my second shot here. And that one was absolutely roasted down the middle. What can I say? I'm a second ball American. <laughs> all right, next rule I wanna to talk to you about here is the embedded ball rule. We all know that any ball that's embedded into its own pitch mark if any of the ball is below the surface of the ground, you get free relief. Well, we have a ball here that just missed carrying the, the lip of this bunker and it's plugged. But a lot of people think because it's plugged into the lip of the bunker here that we, we don't get relief. Well, if that was the case and we were actually plugged into the sand here, that's correct, we wouldn't get relief. But this is not in the sand. This is in the dirt, in the rooting system of this grass. So that's technically an embedded ball. Okay, so we do get free relief from that. So we'll mark the area, get a club length from there, take our, take our drop, take that ball out of here. Club length we mark, take our drop from the knee here, and now we got a nice easy chip. Oh, that could go in, off camera. All right, for this next rules tip, we're gonna have to use our imagination a little bit here. We're gonna talk about ground under repair. Now we know that any ground under repair that is marked, we get free relief from. But did you know that ground and repair doesn't have to be marked to get free relief? Now we got fall coming here in the Northeast. Leaves are gonna be dropping on the ground. And let's just pretend for a second here because the staff here at Lansing City Country Club does such a great job. I literally drove through the entire golf course and looked for some ground and repair. I couldn't find any. So I'm making my own little pile here. Okay, we got a pile of leaves and sticks. So let's just say that the maintenance crew here was making piles of leaves, okay? and they were gonna come back later and get those piles out, okay? So if your ball ends up in one of these piles of debris that the maintenance crew has left and they intend to pick it up later, then it's considered ground under repair because they are literally repairing the ground. Same goes for any debris, really. If they're cutting, say they're cutting down a lump of trees and they haven't got the trees out of there yet and your ball's uh, maybe in between them or, or right behind a tree that's cut down that they are gonna remove that's considered ground under repair. Maybe they just pulled plugs for aeration and they blew all the plugs into a pile to scoop them up later. And your ball's in that pile, then you get free relief. So we're gonna, we're gonna pretend here that this is a pile. There was a bunch of piles around here. My ball ended up in here. I'm gonna be able to pull that ball out, take my nearest point of relief and play from there. Oh my gosh, what did I just do? Oh no, that's in the water. I just putted my ball in the water. Absolute disaster situation here. But there's something you always have to remember. It pays to know the rules. We always have the option of taking stroke and distance anytime we hit it in the penalty area. So we could go down there by the red line, take two club links no closer to the hole, or we could take our stroke and distance, which allows us to re-hit the shot from the place we, we hit it last, add a stroke, and now we know what we did wrong, okay? We can correct it, hit a little bit softer this time, no, it's downhill, and that one's not bad. Still a little bit by there, but we have a chance of making that 
for our seven. We were putting for four on this par five birdie. Four went into the uh, penalty area, drop five, hit six, tap in for seven. This might be a better relief option on the putting green than going down there and having to hit a chip. Like we said, second ball All-American, learn from your mistakes. We're always better hitting the ball the second time than the first time. Stroke and distance might be a good option. So remember, you always have the option of stroke and distance. You don't necessarily have to go in and take relief from where it entered the penalty area. Remember that. All right, let's talk about bunkers here for a second. I understand there's so many people out there, so many golfers out there that are scared to death of bunkers, especially a high lift bunker shot like this. They may be hit, hitting in this thing all day without getting out. And if you're playing a stroke play event or something like that, and this happens to you, you can make a, a crazy score here. You can make a 10, a 12, whatever. So if you're really, really petrified of bunkers, you have a high lift and you know there's no way you're getting out no matter how many times you try, well, there's a rule that lets you drop outside of the bunker. You can go online from your ball to the pen and as far back as you'd like and take a drop. This is gonna cost you two strokes. So here on this par three, if I hit my first shot here, I'd take two, three, and I'd be hitting my fourth shot up. But maybe I can get up and down for, uh, for five, for double bogey. If I'm somebody who doesn't love bunkers, this might be a great option for you. But there's other things that the rules allow us to do in the bunkers to help us save shots. Number one, they let us remove uh, loose impediments. So anything like leaves and stones and rocks, we can get out of the way. But this is my personal favorite rule about bunkers. We're gonna head over to this next bunker over because in this bunker that we're in, we're not allowed to ground our club. Now, if we had multiple clubs with us, we could put a club on the ground, but the club we're hitting here, as we set up, we're not allowed to ground this club into the ground. But if we go over to the next bunker over, we're allowed to ground our club. So let's head over there. All right, we're at the next bunker over. We're not in our bunker. We have the same kind of texture, the same hill here. And what we can do here is ground our club as much as we want. We can take practice swings, hit the ground, okay? And we can practice hitting our, our shot here. We can practice swinging and seeing where our club is entering the ground. Feel the texture, is it soft, is it firm? This could be a great option if you're at a new golf course. You haven't hit a bunker shot all day. You have no idea what the sand texture is. Just as long as you're not in your bunker that your ball's in, you can ground your club as much as you want and practice. Now, of course, you can't take up too much time. Uh, so if your playing partners are waiting for you or you're taking a ton of time doing this, you may be uh, subject to a penalty, but as long as you're doing it in a fast motion, fast manner, and of course, you're gonna wanna rake this as well when you're done, you can practice before you get back into your bunker. All right, now we're back in our bunker here. We know we could take the two stroke relief, but we're feeling confident with our bunker game, especially after that practice. We've removed all the loose impediments. Now we're gonna go ahead and try to hit the shot. Oh yeah, that's nice. That is really nice. Some rules to help you save strokes in the bunker. You're welcome. All right, we're inside of a penalty area here. A couple things to remember. We don't have to hover our club anymore. I used to hate having to do that in a penalty area. Now we can ground our club without a penalty. But even more important in my opinion, we can remove loose impediments. I had this huge rock in front of my ball. Uh, in years past, before 2019, the rules changed. I'd have to hit it with that rock there. Now I don't, okay? Now I'm able to ground my club, remove all the loose impediments, and hit my shot. Oh yeah. All right, this is the last way we're able to save some shots by using the rules, and this is on the putting green. Number one, we can obviously putt with the pen in now. I think most people know that. Uh, number two, if we do accidentally hit our ball on the putting green, whether we hit it with our club by accident, maybe we kick it by accident, we can go ahead and replace that ball to its original spot without a penalty. So we don't have to be worried when we're taking our putting practice. So we can get this cl putter close to the ball here to make sure we're not you know, bringing the putter out and in without worrying about hitting the ball. Because if we do hit the ball, no problem. We can obviously type down, pat down spike marks now. We're allowed to touch our line. So if we're playing with somebody, we're playing with a friend and saying, hey, you see this mark right here? Hit it right there. And we're allowed to touch that with our club now. So there's a lot of different ways we can save some strokes on the green here. Just remember those. Let's see if we can make this putt. Yes, first try, I promise. <laughs> All right guys, thanks so much for watching. I really appreciate it. I hope this video helped you understand the rules a little bit better and a couple of ways of using the rules to your advantage. If you have any questions, drop them in the comment section below. Uh, if you could, give this video a big thumbs up. It really helps me out a lot. And click that subscribe button we're doing all things golf on this channel. 
Thanks so much for tuning in. We'll see you next time.